Well, you're not going to see folks get saved unless you share the gospel with them. Right, come on. When we say things like, it's not all about numbers. You're right, it's not. It's not all about numbers. Anybody here believe it's all about numbers? That what we're doing right now is all about numbers? Any, any accountants in the place? It's, all, it's just all about numbers? No, nobody believes that, but it is all about souls. That's right, right. And when the number we're talking about represents a soul, yes, sir. that's what it's all about. That's right. That it really is. At that point, numbers become very important. You know, what's our problem with numbers anyway? Are, aren't there a lot of numbers in the Bible? Right. Yeah. There's lots of numbers in the Bible. Isn't there an entire book called Numbers? Yeah. You know what that number is filled with? That, that book is filled with? Numbers. numbers. Man, there are a lot of numbers in that book. And they called it Numbers for a reason. I don't think God has a problem with numbers. Right. It's not all about numbers, but hey, numbers are not a bad thing. Right. It's not all about numbers. And listen, I'm not telling you that it is. I don't believe this, but we, we need some balance here. Right, right. We need to get a little bit of balance. You can be balanced on some things without being a compromiser. If you know me, I don't compromise on anything. I have very strong opinions about stuff, and I'll argue them until I die. It's not all about numbers, but numbers are pretty important. Yes, sir. No one gets saved without, without numbers. Yes, sir. It's about souls. There's lots of numbers in the Bible. You know, We know that there were 12 tribes of Israel. You know why we know that? Because Israel wasn't a number. He was a guy. Israel was a man. There were 12 tribes of Israel. We know who they are. We know their names because those names also represent men. They represent people. You know, 12 was probably an important number to Jacob, a.k.a. Israel. You know why? Because he had 12 kids. So that was an important number to him. Every one of those numbers represented one of his children. And the outcome of, of, of how those children were treated mattered to, mattered to him. If I go to the nursery and I have three kids in the nursery, I'm not just going to say, give me as many as you want. Okay, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous to think that numbers don't matter at all. If I come home with a car and Camille says, how much does it cost? And I tell her, it's not about numbers, you know. <laughs> it really isn't about numbers. You know, it's, it, it, she, it, we're, we're not going to have a, a, a good marriage there. We're going to have a problem. She's going to say, those numbers matter a little bit. You know what I mean? What's our problem with numbers? Imagine watching the news and there's a story about a building on fire. You find out that there were people in the building. The newsman says, we're not going to tell you how many were involved in that fire because it's just not really about the numbers after all. Listen, if 12 people trusted Christ during soul winning, then that's 12 souls that are not going to spend an eternity in hell. Right. Amen. That matters. Right. That means something. Don't tell me they don't matter. The Bible's filled with numbers, and we say that we believe every word's there for a reason, don't we? <coughs> yes, sir. Don't we say we believe that the Bible is the inspired word of God, and every word there is important? Hey, how about even the numbers are important to them? He put them in there for a reason. If they matter to the Holy Spirit, they ought to matter to us. Yes, sir. A number can turn an ordinary act into a miracle. Yes, sir. If you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. You ever heard of the feeding of the 5,000 before? Right. You had 5,000 people that were fed with what? Five loaves, two fishes, right? Five loaves, two fishes fed 5,000. Take the numbers away. What do you got? Jesus fed some people with some fish and bread. That's it. It's not a miracle anymore. Hey, you know what happened with Jesus the other day? What happened? He fed some people with some fish and some bread. Big deal. Now, it's, now this, this miracle has been taken away. Now it's not a big deal anymore. A, a, an ordinary act can turn into a miracle because God used it. God, God expounded it upon it. God multiplied it. God turned it into something that it wasn't. Right. Gideon had a miracle victory because he won with 300 people, That's not right. with all the rest yes, of them. Right. Those right. numbers mattered to God. That's right. The Bible recorded it. Maybe you think those are silly examples. Maybe what you're thinking is that has nothing to do with anybody being joined to a New Testament church. Show me an example of that, you might be saying. Well, that's a tough one. Or at least it would be. <laughs> but it's not. Because in the book of Acts, we learn at the day of Pentecost that 3,000 were added unto the church in that one day. Amen. And what is that? That is people who were saved and who were added to a local New Testament church. And we know how many there were. Amen. We know there were at least 3,000 that happened that day. And I tell you what, that is the word of God. Take it out at your own peril. Right. Right. Rip words out of the word of God if you want to and cast them aside. They don't matter, but do so at your own peril. Yes, sir. Doubt the miracles of God to save a soul and give credit to something else if you want to, but do so at your own peril. Right. They're doing it because they only care about numbers. Okay, so what do you care about? Right. Wow. What do you care about? Presumably you're saying that I care about numbers and you care about souls, is what you're saying, right? So show me what you're doing to care about souls now. Right. Amen. Here's a better question. Ye who accuse me of only caring about numbers and you care about souls, why am I willing to do more for a number than you are for a soul? Amen. Amen. 
out of all the miracles in the Bible, the hardest thing for me to believe is he forgave me. Yeah. That's it. Right. But he did. Amen. But he did forgive me. Yes, sir. And that is the biggest miracle that I have ever experienced or will ever see. And all the rest of it wouldn't mean anything to me if he didn't also save my soul. Yes, 